Hello gentlemen, welcome to chapter 5 where we're talking about thermodynamics and thermochemistry. Thermodynamics is the study of energy and how the energy transforms, and thermochemistry is the study of the relationship between chemical reactions and the energy changes that involve heat. Now our first section in this chapter is focusing on the nature of energy. So to define energy, it's the ability to do work or transfer heat. Work is the energy used to cause an object to move against a force. Many of you guys who took active physics, you remember this equation, work equals force times distance. So work is um, the energy it takes for a force to be applied over a specific distance. And heat is the energy used to cause the temperature of an object to change. One really important thing to remember about heat is that heat travels from hot to cold. So heat would travel from a hotter object to the cooler object. Now, there are two major types of energy that we're going to for this particular section. Kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy an object has by <clears throat> excuse me, virtue of its motion. It's governed by this equation here, Ke equals one half mv squared. Now in terms of chemistry, we're looking at this equation in terms of atoms, molecules, ionic compounds. Atoms and molecules have mass, and they're moving at some specific velocity, and that gives them kinetic energy. And this is important because atoms and molecules, in order to have chemical reaction, need to collide with one another. They have to have this velocity, and that velocity is associated with different energies, which creates chemical reaction. And in those chemical reactions, we have energy being produced oftentimes which comes from this potential energy. Now potential energy is the energy an object has by virtue of its position or for us most importantly its chemical composition. So it's important to remember that there are energies in the bonds that atoms make to form compounds. For example, potential energy is stored in the bonds of fuels. We burn fuels and energy is released when we do that. That's combustion. And more specifically, the energy of a substance that has to deal with temperature. So if we talk about energy in terms of temperature, that's called thermal energy. Now energy can be explained in a couple of different units. The most popular unit that we're going to use here in chem is going to be the joule. One joule can be defined as one kilogram meter squared per second squared. The other unit that we'll use, and it's still commonly used widely, but it's not an SI unit, is the calorie. One calorie equals 4.184 joules. Now when we're looking at how kinetic energy and potential energy change, we definitely have to keep in mind. That's called the system and the surroundings. So we have to set parameters for ourselves. So when we're looking at energy changing, we have to look at the system. The system is what we're studying. So what we're looking at in terms of our you know, investigation that day or a laboratory or a problem on the board, it usually deals with the reactants and products. So in this case, the example, my picture to the left, are the hydrogen and oxygen molecules here in this chamber. These are considered the system. The surroundings very easily are everything else. So everything outside of the system is the surroundings. So the piston here, the metal cylinder case outside, the air outside, all is considered the surroundings. Now, when we're analyzing how the surroundings and system are changing in energy, we have to use the first law of thermodynamics, which says that energy is neither created or destroyed. In fact, the total energy of the universe is a constant, so the energy that was present during the Big Bang is still the energy that's present in present day meaning energy has been transformed and converted in different ways, but it's the same amount. Now, the energy of the system is called the internal energy. This is the sum of all kinetic and potential energies in the system. Now, what we're going to really be focused on in this chapter is really looking at, if we look at this graph here, this is my initial energy of my system, looking at how the energy of the system changes. So if I had, let's say, gasoline, for example, I put it in my car, that energy by, sorry, that gasoline by nature has some energy, 
some the particles in it are moving and there is energy in the bond so it has kinetic and potential energy but what I'm really concerned about is when I combust it or when I react that gasoline how does the energy change does the energy go down to some final state here some final energy or does the energy increase so from this baseline um, that we've drawn here once this gasoline is combusted what does it do that's what we're pretty much looking at does it change um, and decrease or does it change and increase over here on this side that energy changes we have to compare our final versus our initial states. So we're going to be really concerned about the change in energy, delta E. So it's the final energy of our system minus the initial energy of our system, governed by this equation here. And it's of our system. Keep that in mind. So over here, if our change in energy is less than zero, meaning if it's negative, that means our final energy is less than our initial energy. We can see that here in this case to the left we started here at some initial energy and we fell down to some final energy this change means that the system released energy to the surroundings we call this an exergonic change but if we're talking about heat energy which we commonly will be doing we call it an exothermic change now conversely if we look here, if our initial energy is lower than our final energy and our delta E is greater than zero, meaning a positive value, that means that the system absorbed energy from the surroundings. So our reactants and products took in energy. This energy change is called endergonic and if we're talking about strictly thermal energy or heat energy, it's called an endothermic change. So, gentlemen, this is a little intro to thermodynamics. Please take notes, come prepared, and welcome.